Hello everyone, this is Carter Finance, and today we're going to be talking about dollar cost averaging versus lump sum. So what else are we going to talk about? Um, we're talking about the basics. What is dollar cost averaging? And what is lump sum investing? The pros and cons of each, the studies and evidence. My study I did in Excel, uh, the best stocks to dollar cost average or lump sum invest in, and the conclusion. So fundamentally, what is dollar cost averaging? It's pretty simple. You're buying in increments every single month or a dedicated period of time. So like every week, um, every two weeks after your paycheck, uh, if you have a W-2 job, um, every month or every quarter. So this is supposed to illustrate buying every single month, but you can't fit 20 money bags <laughs> in a month. So just think of buying every single month or the first of the month or the 15th of the month, whatever you like versus lump sum investing. So you might get a estate or you might get real estate from your parents and you uh, sell it off. And then what do you do with that money? You lump sum invest it. So you're buying a huge, so let's say you sell a house off for 200,000, you want to invest $150,000 into the market. So you invest $150,000 at one point in time. That is what lump sum investing is. And that will be our argument for today. Now the pros and cons of dollar cost averaging. So buying every month, the pros, you minimize the downside risk of a huge investment. So right before 2008, the financial crisis, there was a, there was all time highs. So if you would have invested then and you see your money to basically deplete by 52%, um, psychologically, that's going to do some damage to you. Number two, take advantage of the market market's natural volatility by lowering the average price that you pay. So you, you're buying shares at $300, you're buying shares at $320, you're buying shares at $280. You're kind of balancing out um, how much you're paying for these. You're not overpaying, and sometimes you're actually getting a deal because you're underpaying. Avoid the feelings of the regret of the market. We already talked about this. So if you lump sum invest and your money decreases by 20 or 30%, then it's going to do some damage to you because no one likes to lose that much money and you're, you're more, you might be likely to sell, um, which is unfortunate because that's not how investing works. And, and we'll talk about um, kind of the psycho, psychologically what you have to do and the books you should read before you even invest. Um, you don't have to worry about the market, market conditions. Now, the cons of dark DCA. We can just go off abbreviations now because I've repeated it uh, multiple times. So the cons, you may receive less returns um, over the long term. Because you're buying increments, you're not, uh, you potentially might not be getting the best deal. And we'll talk about that later as well. So your money is losing value. So there's this thing called inflation. Inflation will eat your money two to 3%. And what does inflation actually mean? It means your dollar is losing value every single day, actually. You didn't know that. Um, but every year, it, uses, it loses about 2 to 3%. And so what do you do to counteract that? It's okay. There are short-term bonds, and there are tips. Treasury, treasury inflated protected securities. I talked about that in a previous video. I will link that um, down below if you want to check that out. But it basically just protects you against inflation. Now, another con is you may feel like you are not doing enough. This is another problem. You feel like it's too passive. It's too easy. These hedge fund guys, these other guys are making it seem like you have to day trade to make a lot of money in the stock market. But if you follow these fundamental principles, then you'll outperform the hedge funds. You'll outperform the day traders, the fake gurus. All right, let me get off that tandem right there. Let's move on. Pros and cons of lump sum investing. The pros, you'll gain exposure to the market as soon as possible. So you see right here on this chart, if you invested right here, your money uh, probably quadrupled. I can't really tell based off the numbers, but probably quadrupled. And you got that media effect for investing all that right there. Instead of if you would have bought every month, your returns would be less. Your returns would be great, but they'd be less. Let's see. Historical trends. Uh, let's just skip past that one. Doesn't really matter. Um, when markets are going up, your money to work. This is just really 
they're all the, saying the same things. Um, basically, put your money in early and get higher returns later in life. Now, the cons could be buying into a high market. So the the example I gave was in two thousand eight, um, the financial crisis. I believe it's I believe it's right here if you can see. Um, I can't really see the timeline, but I'm going to assume that's 2010 and 2008. You buy into a high market and you watch your money deplete by 52%. That is a possibility. And if you wanted to retire in 15 years, or if you wanted to retire in five years, um, then you might have hurt your, your chances of that. So you need to talk to a financial advisor before you do anything. We'll see what else. If you're starting retirement, we already talked about that. You might not reach the level because you're buying into a high market. Um, and you could also lose sums of money easily, um, 10 to 30%. There's a correction every year of 10%. We could be experiencing that now. I'm not sure. I'm not going to predict that um, because I don't care. Um, now, the evidence. Uh, this is going to be really interesting if you hear this. So Northwestern. Uh, the Northwestern North, Northwestern Mutual, sorry, I can't speak. Um, the evidence that actually came out was if you invested in 100% stocks um, from 1950 to the present, and they did it in like intervals. So from 1950 to 1960, then they would rate which one were, was better. So dollar cost averaging actually lost lump sum investing um, outperformed 75% of the time. That was crazy when I read that. I was like, wow. And then on the on the other side, um, if you did a 60-40 portfolio, 60% being stock, 40% being bonds, 80% of the time lump sum investing, LSI, that's the abbreviation, outperformed 80% of the time. Now the, now the Vanguard study, lump sum investing outperformed DCA, so dark cost averaging 66% of the time. Cons, if you miss, now this is what I was thinking, I'm like, what happens if you miss um, that, that, that kind of winning period, if you understand what I mean? So the other 30% of the time, what happens to those people? When I'm reading these white pages, and these are smart people are making these studies, and they never explain, do, do the people that miss that period, do they underperform? Do they just perform at a normal level? What happens to them? So that's just uh, something I wish they kind of covered. Now my study on Excel for us. So I created a Excel spreadsheet, took me about 20, 30 minutes or so. So I did uh, two studies. So from 2001 to 21, so 20 years, I've deployed $130,000 into the market starting in 2001 uh, versus the DCA dollar cost averaging model. Um, and actually LSI won this one by, let's see, it's about 20, 20 grand or so um, in the long term. So then I did a 50 year one all the way from 1971 to current day. So I deployed 300 K into the market in 71 versus dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging returned me $4 million in 50 years. That is amazing. But if you deployed it all in 1971, you would have 11 million, 11.6 million to be exact. Now, this is kind of my opinion piece. Now, what should you buy? I personally buy 1Q. What is 1Q? It tracks the NASDAQ. What is NASDAQ? It's uh, basically tech, technology stocks so like your Google, your Apple, your Amazon, your, your Facebooks, technology sector. SPLG, it's just the S&P 500, so it's the index. Um, if you don't know what that is, I covered it in another video. Or you can look up S&P 500 um, investing in it. Investopedia has great videos on it. SPYG, this is a little bit different. It's similar to the S&P 500, but the the top five technology stocks are weighted at 40%. So this one is a pro and a con because it's weighted so high in technology. So if the technology sector goes down in one year, uh, SPYG is going to lose a lot more value because it's weighted at 40%. SPY, simply the S&P 500. And you'll probably be wondering why I gave you all these different indexes. The VTI, the total stock market index, has about 4,000 stocks traded, um, all in the United States. Um, only 0.1% is foreign stocks. Now, the VWO is way different. It's emerging markets. Um, so its top, top holdings were 
uh, Taiwan Semiconductors, I believe, and Alibaba. So that's as of September 18th. That's when this video is made. So if anything happens after that, um, if these prices move, then you'll know why. So the conclusion, both are great options, but as long as you are investing and saving for retirement, then you're on the right path for success. If you're young, like me, 18, 19, um, and you're investing, you're already on the right path. If you're watching this video, um, you're already on the right path. Now, if you believe the markets will continue to rise um, with both these methods, you'll be all right. Uh, most of us don't have uh, parents or a lump sum of money to invest, so dollar cost averaging is fine. I don't have a million dollars yet. So I, I just take my military paycheck. I paycheck from other jobs. Um, when I get an internship and actually get a real job, um, then I'll be able to start uh, putting more money into my investments. But right now I'm doing a really good job. I put enough money in per month, for all like I said, from the military paychecks and that um, I, I max out my Roth IRA, which is what I want to do and what you should do as well. And then two books that I recommend. I recommend this book, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John C. Bogle. What will it teach you? It will teach you the truth of the industry, how you can outperform hedge funds. Um, it will talk about how basically all these people are going to try to take your money. Another book that covers that is Unshakable. Sorry if you can't see if it's reflective. By Tony Robbins. What he talks about is financial advisor, uh, financial advisors not working in your best interest. Um, that was really just revealing to me. That was, um, and also he talks about mutual funds taking your money, um, people trading too much, and incurring taxes. So these two books, I suggest to every single person that asks me, "How can you be good in finance? What do I need to know in finance?" Read these two books, and then we can add on more books later. But uh, even with the evidence, I I chose dollar cost averaging. Um, and we already talked about this. If you don't have a lot of a huge lump sum to invest um, due to your younger age or just due to whatever, whatever factors, I chose uh, dollar cost averaging. So if you have any questions, um, please give me a comment if I can work on something. If uh, you need me to choose my, if you need me to show my evidence, then I can do that as well. Um, but thank you and thank you for watching.